Sir Brady. Oh, yeah. Transformers, the Michael Bay directed multi billion dollar franchise about robots from the planet Just Cybertron who can turn into any human design. <laughs> It's also the only franchise I could probably have a career in. Now, I love this franchise. So what is this franchise's problem? It's got all the money, it's got a fan base, so what's its problem? I'm going to rattle off a few points in which I think the Transformers film series is lacking compared to its TV show and comic book counterparts, which are better well received. Let's get started. Transformers, more like human forms, am I right? Yeah, that joke needs explaining. It's not even a joke, it sucks. One of the biggest problems with the film franchise, I feel, is the fact that the humans are the main characters, not the Transformers. Which, for a film with Transformers, that just doesn't seem right. They should call it White Actor Runs Through Explosions, with a barely legal guild chasing behind them and a government agency going after them, but that needs their help because the Transformers are all good, eh? Having the humans be the centre of the franchise, I feel originates from early drafts of the first film. Writers Roberto Orsi and someone else. In which writers Roberto Orsi and Alex Kurtzman featured the Autobots with no dialogue and had the characters of Sam and Michaela be the leads instead. The producers at Paramount feared that talking robots would look ridiculous on a 2007 cinema screen. The writers, however, felt that not having the Transformers talk, indeed if it did look silly, would betray the fan base. But this was too late. As the core of the story had already been written, writers instead had to add bits of dialogue for the Transformers into the script instead of writing a completely new one. Even though the producers were proven wrong about the whole ridiculously looking robots, why they kept Sam and Michaela as the leads for the sequel is unclear. And to be honest, why they kept any of the humans around aside from some form of military is kind of strange as the humans really take the narrative away from the Transformers. So to sum it up, in the films, the Transformers are the side characters while the humans take centre stage. An issue that stems all the way back from the first film and is carried over onto all three of its sequels, and by looking at the cast list and teaser trailer, will be present in the fifth film as well. So how do we solve this? There are no ridiculous robot looking filmmaker restrictions, so there should be no reason why you can't make a good Transformers film starring the Transformers. Next point. All the Transformers films have become quite bland, even though each film starts with a rather interesting setup. Transformers 2, the villain plans to block out our sun to use its energy via this ancient machine. Do we see this? Um, no, we, no we don't. Transformers 3, Dark of the Moon. Our good guy turned bad guy Sentinel Prime and Megatron want to bring Cybertron, their home planet, to Earth. Use our resources and us as humans as their slaves to rebuild their planet. Do we, do we see this? No. Uh, no. And Transformers 4, Age of Bloody Bloop. You know what, I don't care about that film that I'm not going to explain to you why there's a problem with it. Now let's keep going. Now in a general film, the protagonists will win. But in some way, they will show us what the antagonists would do and could do if they win themselves. Bringing some sort of conflict to us as an audience member. Think of a film like Kingsman. The filmmakers show us what would happen if the villain's plan comes to fruition and the impact it would have. You come back to the Transformers franchise, and in the end, these villains plans just end up being empty threats. So this just leaves every film with a bad climax, especially by the third and fourth one. We're just seeing them battle it out and then waiting for Optimus to come in and overpower them, leaving all of these films just boring by the end. So to sum it up, these films are tensionless. We flow from set piece to set piece, not being intimidated by the villains plan and really just waiting for the credits to roll. Wow, that, that point was way less complicated than the last one. Let's move on. Underdeveloped villains, annoying humans, and interchangeable Autobots. So Megatron shows up quite late in the game in the first film, and then dies. Transformers 2, the Fallen, who can only be beaten by a prime, sends a resurrected Megatron to kill Optimus. But if Megatron kills Optimus, that means Megatron's stronger than his master, which means that the underdeveloped villain of the first film is stronger than the underdeveloped villain of the second film. Which means... Double KO! Dark of the Moon. Good guy turned bad guy Seasonal Prime wants to bring Cybertron to Earth. 
but he's only on screen for 35 minutes. I mean, come on! Seriously! We want a good villain! We love a great villain! The Joker, Darth Vader, think of Alan Rickman in Die Hard. He's in the film for almost half the runtime and is equal screen time to John McClane, our protagonist. And that makes our end confrontation so good! The villain problem it just feels like bad storytelling, again stemming from the producers of the first film not knowing what to do with the villain. There is no chemistry, not a lot of screen time, and we're just told it's a bad guy. The annoying human element is odd to me. Like I said before, I don't know why the creators kept Sam and Michaela, or why they introduced blonde Megan Fox, Seymour Seven, and Sam's parents. Sam's affiliated characters were so dumb, especially in the second film, where Sam and Leo pretty much screamed their way out of that film as comedy relief. Now, Michael Bay stated during early production of Dark of the Moon that he wanted to make a slightly less dorky comedy film. But then he goes and hires Francis McDormand, John Malkovich, Ken Jong, and Alan Tudyk. So, what the hell type of film was he trying to make? Four great comedy actors in a film that you don't want to be a dorky comedy. Finally, the Autobots. They're forgettable, interchangeable, and it sucks because in my mind it should be impossible for these characters to lack any sort of personality or individuality. Wow, Paris, big words. Aside from being designated colours, it's outstanding how many of these characters are just forgettable and interchangeable. Even Michael Bay doesn't know half the characters. So, aside from Optimus and Bumblebee, let's see how many of your favourites made it into Age of Extinction. Sideswipe? No. Dino? No. Uh, no. Oh, okay, kind of. No. Wait, who? No. No. No, but, but for a while. No. Uh, no. Uh, no. No. Yes, but Billy? No. Well, unless your favourites are these two, um, they're not in any of the other films. But did you actually notice it? Now I'm not happy that they got rid of a whole bunch of Autobots, but at least when they brought in the new ones, you had some way of identifying them. You got the Asian one, you've got the green one, you've got the John Goodman fat one that farts. Look, what I'm trying to say is that it shouldn't be hard to give these characters life. One of the problems was that Bay didn't see these things as characters. On the special edition DVD, he literally referred to the majority of the sequel's characters as either their car model or colour. He's pretty much agreeing with me that he doesn't care about their individuality. These Autobots not having any sort of personality shouldn't be a thing by the way. On every toy box for a Transformer ever, it's given the characters a detailed background bio and the statistics on their abilities. So how can you not just copy that from the box and into the film, instead of just giving each Autobot a walking catchphrase? Oh, let's wrap this up before the true nerd comes out. Now I'm passionate about a franchise being faithfully adapted because it's completely possible, otherwise don't fucking do it. You know, I just realised I really sound like a whiny fanboy. So what should they do? Get better screenwriters, change a director, it's not hard to write a good Transformers story, you've got so many places to look from. Get rid of the human element because we don't care. Hopefully they'll see this and they'll credit me for changing the franchise for the better. So what do you guys think? Do you like Transformers? Who's your favourite character? And what do you think big production companies should do when trying to adapt a franchise? And that's it. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you have a great day. My name is Paris. This is Sir Brady. Stay classy and I'll see you later.